Hey guys, I'm Randy with BRS TV, and today we're exploring the Kessel H1200, H380, and H80 for lighting your refugium so algae grows in your sump and not in your display tank. Today we'll discuss how to choose the right one for you, mounting options, and how to get them set up, as well as recommendations for settings to get great growth from your refugium macroalgae. As we discovered in our BRS TV Investigate series on catamorpha growth and refugium lighting, a properly lit fuge can very well serve as your primary nutrient control method, and Kessel's horticulture specific LEDs perform the best in all of our experiments. Bottom line, these lights are specifically designed with spectrum wavelengths to grow plants, which is evident when you directly compare the spectrum needed for plant chlorophyll production and the spectrum produced by the Kessel LEDs. With a properly lit refugium, we can begin looking at reducing and in some cases completely eliminating other methods to control nutrients like nitrate and phosphate. The BRS-160 has been a great example of this where we converted from a full carbon dosing system and weekly water changes to only using a refugium and skimmer. Even without water changes or other nutrient reduction sources, we continue to see nearly undetectable nitrates and phosphates. Now that we know what these horticulture specific Kessel LEDs are capable of, let's talk about which one you'll need for your tank. Of the three options available, the Kessel H380 is going to be the most popular choice, but each of them have their own benefit within their individual specifications. The smaller 15 watt H80 is best used on a refugium designed to be a supportive filter on a tank that may still require additional nutrient control methods, or as a primary filter on much smaller applications like those with a huge footprint of under a 10 inch by 10 inch area. The more common 90 watt H380 with 75 watts more power than the smaller H80 is a great choice if your desire is to have the refugium act as the primary nutrient reduction method. This horticulture specific LED has anywhere from 5 to 10 times the par and intensity of more common refugium lighting sources and should be more than enough to light a refugium area of up to 18 by 18 inches which covers a wide range of tank sizes and setups. Outside of that if you're using something a bit bigger like a small trough or separate refugium tank adding additional H380s can help to ensure max coverage. Finally, as far as the H1200 is concerned, at four times the wattage of an H380, it's best designed for large commercial applications with extremely large multi-hundreds or thousands of gallon capacities. Coming in at around 380 watts, the H1200 is more than using four individual H380s. Since the Kessel Refugium lights are pretty basic and really only need to be turned on or off for your desired lighting schedule, there's really not much you need to accessorize them with. With that in mind, picking up a simple timer or digital one like these from save a -Watt is really all you should need to get all three running on your tank. Along with that, Kessel does have a specific H-series spectral controller which can program and control the intensity and spectrum on the H80 and H1200 whereas the H300 is more of a plug and play without the same adjustability, so you don't need a special controller for it. Outside of that, there's several mounting options for the H380, mounts like the A-series gooseneck, A-series mounting arm, extension mounts and extension slide bars are all compatible with the H380 and can help you find the right mounting spot for your specific refugium setup. The H80 also has an additional mounting option and can be installed using the mini A-series gooseneck. Let's take a look at what comes in the box for all three of these refugium lights. With the H80 you'll get the light itself that operates at a max of 15 watts and has adjustable knobs for both intensity and color spectrum. The color spectrum has four marked spectrum points from blue to red, however using the grow setting is most common and recommended. You'll also see an input and output for connecting multiple H80s together or connecting it to the H series spectral controller. Finally, the H80 comes with a power cable with about 93 inches of length and a small mounting bracket that provides about two and a quarter inches of clearance when hung from above. The H380 packs a major punch in part intensity with 90 watts of power and comes with a single point mounting hook as well as two smaller mounting hooks for a lower profile and more stable way to hang the light. You'll notice that it has one control knob with preset points at off, grow and bloom and again the grow setting will be the recommended setting. It also comes with a driver and power cord as well as a power extension to get you about 80 more inches of reach to your light. 
Finally, the larger brother of the three, the commercial H1200, which also includes two adjustment knobs for spectrum and intensity, and comes with a heavy-duty power cable that measures about 235 inches. It also has two built-in hanging hooks and 0 to 10 volt inputs for daisy chaining multiple lights together or controlling the light through the H-series spectral controller or an aquarium controller like the Neptune Apex. There's a few mounting methods for all three lights which we'll dive into a bit deeper. When mounting the Kessel H80, you do have the option of using the included small mount or the mini A-series gooseneck, which in most cases will probably be the best option as it allows you to make even more adjustments. For a mounting height, it's always best practice to be aware of salt spray and avoid mounting it in an area where it can be splashed. Depending on your specific needs, it should be mounted somewhere between 6 to 10 inches above the macroalgae. Moving on to mounting the H380, you can hang it from under your stand or DIY bracket using the included hooks or use the Kessel A-Series gooseneck or more rigid A-Series mounting arm for the best fit for your specific setup. The important aspect to mounting this very powerful and undimmable refugium light is to mount it at a reasonable height that provides you with the best spread and coverage over your entire refugium without causing a single point of intense par. I'd recommend shooting for at least 12 inches above the surface of the fuge, but if you just don't have that type of clearance, you could mount it at an angle to get the distance you're looking for. For those of you who can put the H1200 to use, you can suspend it from the ceiling or DIY bracket using a hanging kit like this from ReefBright or use wall mount brackets like these ones from Giesman. Let's talk about setting up and using these lights on your tank's refugium. The first thing we'll want to think about is the flow through your refugium itself. Since most, if not all, the photosynthesis will be happening near or at the surface of the macroalgae, it's probably best to ensure that some of your water flows over the top in order to help bring in fresh CO2 from the water column and to help flush away any byproducts from the photosynthesis itself. For example, if you have a refugium that utilizes an underflow baffle into your next chamber, you may want to look at reconfiguring it so that the flow goes over the baffle instead. Otherwise, you could try to put a power head in the refugium chamber to help stir up the water, but keep in mind that they may clog pretty quickly from free-floating algae. Starting with the H80, using the grow setting will probably provide the best spectrum coverage in those key wavelengths for plant chlorophyll production. And depending on the size of refugium you're installing this light over, you may want to acclimate your macroalgae with this light by starting at 50% intensity and making slight increases until you reach 100% over the course of a few weeks. Now on to the H380. Of the two settings, Grow or Bloom, we recommend using the Grow setting, which seems to have higher peaks in those spectrum wavelengths that are shown to produce higher plant chlorophyll production. As I mentioned earlier, the H380 is not dimmable and can provide a very intense and high par light source. So it's very likely that you'll need to acclimate the algae to this intense light. With that in mind, a good starting point for acclimation should be around two to three hours of initial on time and adding an hour about once each week until you reach that ultimate goal of around 12 hours of total photo period. These may increase or decrease with your specific setup, so keeping an eye on how your macroalgae responds is really going to help to get the H380 dialed in for you. Lastly, since the Kessel H1200 fixture is dimmable, it may be a bit easier for you to acclimate your macroalgae in which case, just keep in mind that this thing is like having the power of the sun in your home and any intensity increases should be very small and spread across a few weeks or months. We use the H1200 specifically on the BRS160, which is obviously overkill, but we only run it at its lowest possible setting of around 5% and about 12 hours total at night. Much like other LEDs and lighting fixtures we use in our hobby, maintaining them can be key to ensuring that they last quite a while. However, since these refugium lights are typically housed in environments prone to higher humidity, less airflow, and potentially damaging splashes and salt creep, keeping up with their maintenance is fairly important. For the Kessel H80, 380, and 1200, keeping the lenses free and clear from salt creep can help to make sure that they put out consistent PAR as well as prevent them from failure should the salt creep get inside the light housing. Outside of that, periodically cleaning the H380 and H1200's mechanical fan with a bit of compressed air is always best practice. Thanks for watching, and if you have any more questions that we didn't answer here, feel free to give us a call, send us an email, or hop on a chat. See you next time on BRS TV.